Oof. Gaming on a Mac, where do we begin? Well, first off, it's missing uh, DirectX uh, APIs, so it's not supported by uh, most AAA titles in the first place, and it's uh, a very limited ecosystem, so you don't really have a whole lot of hardware choices unless you're willing to put together a Hackintosh, which requires a whole lot of know-how, uh, research time, effort, and even then it may not work uh, completely correctly. And then let's talk about the price of Macs and how just expensive Macs can be. Uh, and, and for what you're getting, it's just overpriced hardware. That being said, there is no denying that Apple does make some great products. Maybe you disagree with their pricing or even the way they run their ecosystem, but MacBooks, especially the, those laptops, whether you're talking about the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, or just the regular MacBooks, they're all a pleasure to use. And that's one of the reasons they're favored heavily uh, by uh, more and more professionals and also by students in college. But for those of you that use Macs or MacBooks as your daily drivers, that does limit your ability to game on them. So Nvidia is trying to solve that problem, at least taking baby steps towards that solution. And what I'm talking about here is called GeForce Now. It's a service provided by Nvidia. Right now it's only available to Macs and it's in beta, which the advantage there is that because it's still in beta, it is free to anybody using this on Mac. Basically, the way it works is NVIDIA sets you up with a cloud server with the hardware capable of actually playing your games regardless of whether they're AAA games or they're just something uh, that's sort of low power but you just want to play and for some reason it may not just be supported on your Mac. So the server runs your game and streams the gameplay to your device. Your device is then able to provide the inputs for the game and sends it back to the server. And then of course there's that data flowing to and from the server where you're sending the inputs and the gameplay is being sent back to you. And of course that does add uh, latency to your gameplay experience. So my biggest concern going into these tests is that esports titles just won't play that well because of the added latency. But I'm also a little bit concerned about the video quality going in uh, just because I'm not sure if we're gonna get that full high-resolution look of games or if it's gonna look kind of fuzzy I really don't know what to expect going into these games So I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description down below if you are on a Mac or have access to a Mac And you want to check out GeForce now, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to my MacBook Air behind me and Test some games out to see just how well this service uh, at least acts and feels right now Okay, so we're going a little bit old school here with pointing just the camera at the computer screen, but this is the GeForce Now launcher, and you'll notice it has all these different games. I believe um, there are actually quite a few supported, but not every game in Steam is supported. That is worth noting. Also, Battle.net games are included. We have uh, Destiny 2 there, which is uh, nearly brand new uh, for PCs, and I think, think it actually pretty much is brand new for PCs. Um, also, Overwatch, you know, Player Unknowns, Battlegrounds, really the popular games, or at least the most popular games, do seem to be supported here. But the way it works is you just click on whatever game you're wanting to play, and then you just hit the install button. Now, for games that you've already played, like I've already loaded up Overwatch at least, uh, you can just click launch. Now, one of the added benefits here is that when you install a game, it actually doesn't take very long because it doesn't have to download the entire game. I assume NVIDIA has some sort of repository on their end and as easy as just copying files that are stored somewhat locally instead of downloading them all completely from the internet and installing them into a new Steam instance and all of that. So it does all act very much uh, snappy even when you're installing a new game. Um, and I'm not sure how that's handled, but it is much faster than actually downloading the game yourself. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into Overwatch here and um, you'll notice that it pulls up uh, th this sort of uh, network analyzer, and I assume that has to do more with uh, how much it's gonna compress the video coming on your end, trying to get you the best overall experience. I will also note when it does this, um, I would go with a hardwired connection just for better reliability and also likely better speeds than Wi-Fi, although obviously Wi-Fi is available to you if you have no other option. Okay, then when it launches, it actually launches you into battle.net and you can just based on the mouse movement here, I can tell that this is over the internet and not like a local machine just because the mouse is moving a little bit differently than it did before. But all we have to do now is, uh, since we're already selected on Overwatch, just click play and it should launch right up. All right, so we uh, can just go ahead and click play here 
And I'm going to hop into a 3v3 elimination game because that's usually what I play when I play Overwatch uh, because the games are just a little bit quicker. Uh, let's see how well this thing performs. It's probably not a great idea to be playing as a uh, sniper here, but that's what we're going with. Oh, we have a Pharah. This is a really bad idea. Oh, nice. It's like our Widowmaker already got him. I hit somebody, that's... Oh, I thought I had her. Oh, nice combo. Okay, so a couple quick thoughts there. Um, first of all, I can definitely tell that this is not being played locally. Unfortunately, the, the latency between the mouse movement and actually seeing it on the screen is a little bit unnerving in this game because this is a game especially when you're playing a sniper like I just was there with Hanzo. It's just really hard to hit anything if, if there's that latency. And it's not a lot of latency. It's actually pretty good. For a slow-paced game, I really think that this would actually be a decent setup. Uh, but for what I'm doing, it's just not. Yeah, so Overwatch definitely doesn't feel like a great game uh, when you're playing like this. So I definitely don't recommend playing these uh, fast-paced uh, esports titles, especially games like Overwatch, CSGO, those types of games, probably not the best. So hopping into uh, Skyrim's uh, graphics settings here, if you zoom in, you can see that we have a Tesla P40 as our GPU for this setup, so okay. So again, I can kind of tell that um, there's a little bit of latency here, but because this game just is so much slower paced than uh, Overwatch, it isn't really that noticeable. Like, it, like, it's there, it's just not really nearly as much of a big deal. I'm going to head over to this cave and see if I can't find some enemies. So yeah, I'm, I'm sort of roaming around. The, the speed of whatever system it is, the hardware that's actually powering this game right now, seems pretty solid. The load screen I just went through was actually pretty uh, pretty short, um, even by Skyrim standards. Uh, so, so far, this has been a very nice experience, especially considering I'm on a MacBook Air and the graphics look perfect. Um, if I was on a worse internet connection, then sure, maybe it wouldn't. But right now, I'm extremely happy with how this is performing. Ooh, missed him. Ooh, that one was right to the face. So I, I will say with this, uh, it, it actually it feels nice. I, I don't feel like there's a ton of latency. There is a little bit that you can sort of tell when you're actually in a fight. Um, but I'm not seeing anything detrimental at this point with uh, playing a slower-paced game like Skyrim, Fallout, those games, this actually seems like a really nice service, especially, again, considering I don't have to pay for it right now. While it's still in beta, I'm not paying for this service whatsoever. So he killed me there, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. But I give Skyrim a passing grade there. It actually looked really nice, and again, the latency was not a big deal in that type of game. Okay, so gaming on a Mac using NVIDIA's GeForce Now um, it is actually fairly good. Now the caveat here is that if you're playing first person shooter games, esports titles, those types of things, then this service probably isn't for you and then realistically it's probably not going to be for you for quite a while even in the future because that latency is not going away. But if you're the type of gamer that enjoys uh, slower paced games, regardless of whether they're multiplayer or just single player, uh, this service is actually pretty good. While playing Skyrim, even during combat, the latency wasn't really that big of a deal. It was sort of there and kind of noticeable from time to time, but it wasn't something that I was constantly dwelling on as I went through that cave, especially. I was really more concerned with actually uh, shooting the bandits that were in there, and it worked flawlessly in that regard. So whether this service is right for you really comes down to what types of games you play, uh, the fast-paced ones are sort of out, the slower-paced ones are definitely in, 
and provided that you have a stable internet connection, I will say the video that I was seeing here, the video quality rather, was uh, also quite good. In fact, the video quality, had I not known that it was being streamed over the internet, could have passed the eye test as being run natively as opposed to being streamed. So uh, provided that you have that internet connection that can support it, the video quality is definitely good. So let me know in the comments down below if you own a Mac or a MacBook, if you plan on checking out GeForce Now, again, that link to GeForce Now will also be in the description below. If you like this content, give it a like, a share, subscribe. All those things are helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag for your convenience. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.